The United Nations has 17 sustainable development goals. They range from zero hunger to affordable and clean energy to gender equality, but each one cannot be seen in isolation. For us to achieve sustainable development in Africa, we need to see how they all work together, how each piece is part of a whole. This requires transdisciplinary cooperation, not only between researchers in different fields, but also among researchers, government decision makers, and practitioners. It means connecting various stakeholders to think about the future together and see how their thoughts and actions can feed into a shared vision for the Africa we want. And that is why you are all here today. At this summit, the SDG Africa Summit, our aim is to mobilize collaborative efforts to accelerate African-led activities driving sustainable development on the continent. You and I, researchers and academics, NGOs, practitioners, and government decision makers, private enterprise and civil society. We are the defining factors that will shape the future of Africa. This is why this SDG Africa Summit is so important. It offers a platform to connect various stakeholders to brainstorm solutions to the continent's greatest challenges and to envision ways in which we can drive sustainable development for a brighter future. Over the next few days, we can collaborate across diverse fields and leverage the power of interdisciplinary thinking. We have a remarkable opportunity to contextualize our understanding of the characteristic challenges of the continent to be able to generate solutions that work for the continent. And we can build lasting, meaningful relationship that extends far beyond the summit, tying together a lattice work of great minds to support ongoing cooperation. It is with these hopes that I welcome all of you to the SDG Africa Summit 2021. Let us choose the Africa we want. If we take stock of these lost opportunities in terms of economic and social policy, the toll is heavy. But we should not be limited to the coldness of a macroeconomic demonstration. Rather, it is about an overview of the limits, failures of approaches, institutions, in short, a history of personal and institutional learning that is way beyond just classifying us as being an impasse and narrow the discussion just to poverty reduction. Basically, the main argument is the defense of a social economy based on the principle of solidarity. In this regard, the beauty of the SDGs, it's not its overwhelming list of indicators, but rather the political message that it is a universal agenda. We are in this together kind of message. In our planning, we wanted to ensure that our conversations in the summit were, focused, were both focused and cross-cutting. We wanted to build conversations equally around the UN uh, SDGs and the Africa Union's Agenda 2063. And so we chose to focus on these seven thematic tracks um, viewed as key in delivering the Africa we want and in focusing our actions as a global Africa-focused, Africa-centered and Africa-led team for accelerating the pace of change towards it. In preparation, each thematic track has been led by experts in the field from UCT and these have built programs, a team of people around them to prepare positioning papers, which you'll find on the website. Um, in the form, uh, and these inform the discussions of the workshops running in the afternoon today and tomorrow. Our approach in the summit is very much a call to action. And so to, we envisage the pre-work of these two before summit workshops and the continuing focusing and engaged broader um, opinions of the summit workshops as defining key pathways forward for post-summit action aimed to be collaborative, targeted and impactful. We know 
most African governments don't have the resources or the capabilities to deliver in a kind of a welfare model that we've seen in the Second World War in the Global North. So you need a much wider distributed societal effort and everyone needs to be able to locate themselves in that effort through this framing. So I think that there's two levels. So to answer the question directly about um, national policy and planning, I think we need to reimagine what those institutional systems themselves need to look like in the future, uh, because the current focus on technocratic systems are not going to cut touch sides with a kind of societal transformation and political reimagination that is called for. These uh, three categories reflect the needs, the areas in which we have to do our research. They reflect the areas in which we should be providing leadership to our nations as academics. And, and, and that's the point that I make. This uh, at here always simply shows how interconnected the SDGs are. Uh, each of them is linked to another of the SDGs. Uh, they, they are designed that way to make the world a more sustainable, a more resilient, a fair and a prosperous one. So these four elements of sustainability, resilience, fairness, and prosperity are key to achieving the SDGs. We can only succeed if we do all of these together. Uh, it would be extremely difficult for any one nation in Africa or elsewhere to try to achieve the SDGs without the support of, the, of other nations without the support of other institutions, without the support of other communities. And that's one that we need to think about. Is there a role for universities in Africa and elsewhere? Yes, clearly. Education, research and innovation are essential for sustainable development. Uh, without this, as I mentioned earlier, it would be extremely difficult for any one nation in this region to attain the SDGs. If we just take the first of the five, of the 17 SDGs, but first of the five I'll touch on, which is related to poverty, it has to be said that this pandemic has had a devastating impact on wealth and poverty. If you just take the most recent World Bank report, they have estimated that the pandemic has so far added 150 million more people who are now ex in the extremely poor category. So that, those are people who can barely survive on their day-to-day -day, uh, income. So there's no question that this pandemic has had just enormous and devastating impact in terms of poverty. In the early days of the pandemic in some countries, I think Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria, for those who were tracking, we could see that state securities had actually killed more Africans in the name of trying to implement lockdown measures and enforce lockdown measures more than the pandemic had actually claimed. So that's also another problem and a source of concern. If we don't have vibrant protests, vibrant engagement with, with, with our elected officials, our governments, then we cannot organize effectively around pushing and demanding for the things that we need to be able to achieve the SDG. Basically exposed to several layers of the devastation that it's really hard to ignore. Um, it's hard to ignore the exposure that we see um, with regard to devastating poverty that um, um, Professor Aite and um, Salim have mentioned already. It's hard to ignore the multidimensional vulnerability that we see in Africa. Um, and it's hard to also ignore the um, deep-seated equity issues um, that we're faced with. But it's, it's also important for us to move forward um, and not to sit in this devastation. And I think one way of doing it is looking at the SDG 17, for instance, which is about partnerships. Um, I think now is the time that we need to really um, test that partnership because um, the SDGs has already 
been a massive test on all of the, I mean, COVID has been a massive test on all of the SDGs. In terms of future state of mining, when we talk about um, future, the, the future shape of work, and I call it the future shape of work, in introducing new technologies, there's no doubt there will be less work done on mine sites. So our commitment to generate will be a catalyst for the generation of five jobs for every one job we have on site, recognises that issue, but also recognises and connects our regional or our collaborative regional development and the, and the installation of infrastructure for broader use by the community can help create new business opportunities, can help create jobs that are much more meaningful and actually live well beyond the life of the mines that we produce or uh, that we develop in those regions. And again, another important example of the sorts of things we can do to make a long-term difference um, to those communities.